Hi, and welcome to a video part of a new series where we'll be talking about APIs and particularly building APIs with the Django REST framework. So in this video, we're just going to go into an introduction of what APIs are and how you can use Django to build APIs. So if you're new to Django, then these concepts will probably be a little bit difficult for you. So I suggest that you rather start off with understanding Django itself. There are some courses on this channel that you can watch and we'll provide the links in the description of this video so that you can check those ones out. But other than that, if you're familiar with Django views, URLs, templates, and mainly forms, just how to accept data and create instances in the database, then you shouldn't have a problem with understanding how the Django REST framework works. So with that, let's get started. Hey everyone, so before getting into it, if you're interested in becoming a better Django developer, then check out justdjango.com. The link is in the description of this video, and here you can find a bunch of different courses and mainly a structured roadmap on how to learn Django. Right now, there's over 25 hours of content for learning just Django, and here you'll be able to start at the absolute basics and work your way through more difficult concepts in an incremental way, all the way to much more advanced applications and ultimately becoming a better Django developer. So if you're interested in that, do check out the link below. We do have a special at the moment. And as of right now, there are only 32 places left, but otherwise enjoy this one. All right, so the first question is what is an API? Now an API stands for application programming interface. And when you explain it like this, it's a little bit difficult to understand what that actually means. So when we go into each of these three words, it'll start to make a bit more sense. So first it's an application. So it's an actual app, something that is functional. We're programming it. So there is an, a programming aspect of it. And then it's most importantly, an interface. An interface is something that allows two things to communicate to each other. And that's basically what sums up an API. It's something that allows two processes to communicate with each other. And the way that you achieve that, the way that you allow these processes to communicate is by programming an application that allows them to then send and receive messages. Now, the next question is why use or slash build an API? And this kind of follows on from the interfacing part. Maybe you have some sort of application that you'd like to share with others. You'd like other people to integrate with and use in their services, or you just have multiple services that need to communicate with one central service. So for example, if you have a website that's built with an API and it's just a REST API on a server, then you've got your website, which is built with, let's say React and it's a static website. And then you've got a mobile application built with Flutter, but you have one central API that all of those front ends are querying data from. Well, in that case, your API is kind of like a central service and everything else can communicate with that central service to get the data and work with the data in their own unique ways. So the why of using or building an API is depending on your goal and the application you're building, but it's mainly just to allow things to communicate and integrate. Now, the whole point of an API is that it only provides the data. So if we look at normal websites where you go to, let's say, wikipedia.com, you open up the browser and you go to that page, it's going to render the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, the images, all of that is going to make up the web page that you see. Now, in that case, the response that you get back from the server could be some text, some HTML, some JavaScript, the actual file that you're querying, whereas an API is returning you only the data that you want to render. So that data is typically returned in a JSON response. So that means it's a kind of like a dictionary and it has keys and values and that payload as some people call it is what you will then work with in your own application however you want to so the most important thing about an api is that it is only returning you the data and because apis only send and receive data that's what allows you to integrate with multiple services because that's all you really care about is getting the data or submitting data to that service. And so that's basically a summary of what an API is, why we use APIs and how they work. And 
Now we can take a look at how we can actually implement this sort of logic using Django and then the Django REST framework. So just a brief overview of what this series is going to cover. In this video, we're going to be dealing with the REST API principles, look at the Django REST framework towards the end. And in further videos, we'll cover more about the Django REST framework and topics such as authentication, permissions, serializers, building API views, and then later on looking at how we can integrate that with front ends or mobile applications like React, Vue, and Flutter. And so with that, we can then go and create a Django project. So first we're going to create our virtual environment. You'll need virtual env installed. So you can just say pip install virtual env, and then you can just create a virtual environment like this. Once you have it, you can then activate it with source env bin activate. That's if you're on Mac or Linux. Otherwise it should be something like env scripts activate if you're on Windows. But now that it's activated, we can go and say pip install Django. That'll get us the latest version, which is now 2.2.6. And once we have that, we can then say Django dash admin start project, and we'll just call it DRF API. And okay, no dashes. So let's just make that DRF underscore API. All right, so there's our folder there. And there's our kind of root, which has the settings URLs and WSGI. So the top level folder, I'm just going to rename to source. And then we can go and create some apps inside there and work with our Django project inside that source folder. So what I'm going to do is just say Python manage.py. And let's actually just change into the source directory. So we'll say manage.py start app and we'll just call it, let's say core. So inside core, we now have our typical app structure. What I'm going to do is just go into views and here we're just going to create a basic view which will return a JSON response. So this is just going to be a function. We'll just say define test view. We'll just take in a request. And normally if we wanted to return some HTML with some context inside it, then we would say return render and pass in the request. But because we don't want to return HTML, we don't want to return text per se. We want to return only the data, which is a JSON payload. So what we do is we make use of the JSON response. This is something built into Django's HTTP module. So we can say from Django.http import JSON response. We also get a bunch of other ones like HTTP response, and you can see all of these over here. So this is your typical HTTP response, which will allow you to return some HTML or just normal text. But again, we're interested in only the data. So we return the JSON response. So what I'm going to do is just build a data dictionary here and we could say name and we could just say John and we'll say age and let's say 23. Then we can just say return JSON response of that data. Notice that the data is a dictionary. So JSON response by default is accepting a dictionary. However, if you do want to pass in other data types, such as a list, then what you can do is you can pass in the safe argument and just set that to false. That'll allow you to pass in things like lists. But because we have an, a dictionary that we're working with, this is fine. So now we can link this up to a URL and we can just do this in our root URL configuration. So we'll just go in here and we can say from core.views import that test view and then we can go to path let's just make it the empty path and we'll say test view and we can just say name is test okay so now we can just say manage.py migrate so we get those initial migrations and then we can say run the server all right there it is so now we can go and open that up and immediately you see we're on the kind of root url and we get this JSON payload that's returned to us, even though it's being displayed in the browser and it looks like HTML, it's not, this is actually JSON. What we can do is actually inspect this page. And if you go to your network and then just refresh the page again, then you'll see that you have one response, which is from our local host. And here's all the request information. If we go to the response, you can see that this is the data that was returned. 
And just to prove that this is JSON, what we can do is come in here and open up another terminal and we can use curl, which is something that we have on Linux and Mac. And we can just say HTTP and we can go to our local host, which is 127 port 8000. And there you can see we get that data being returned to us. So this is what the JSON response does. It's returning that data as a JSON payload. And this is kind of the beginning of what an API is, because if we had some sort of model, let's say we were working with posts, then we would have a post list view and we would return all of our posts in a JSON payload where each post would be its, its own dictionary and it would have all of the fields of that model populated inside here. So maybe your post has a title, it has a description, etc. All of that will be represented as a dictionary and then converted into a JSON payload. And the same thing for retrieving an instance. So if you have a detail view, the same thing for creating a post. If you have a create view, you'll have to submit data. You won't be just submitting a request.post. And the same thing for an update view and a delete view. And so this is where the Django REST framework comes in. It basically allows you to build an API a lot easier and a lot quicker than what you can do with just normal Django. So to get started with that, we can actually just come here and search for the Django REST framework. And there it is, first link on Google. So this is their home page. We can go to installation and it's just pip install Django REST framework. So we're just gonna go with that. Come here and stop the server, install that. And what we can do is say pip freeze into a requirements.txt file. Okay, so there's our requirements. And so now if we come back to this view here, we can then come here and we'll say, these are third party imports and we can say from rest framework. Now we have that package installed. We can say dot views import the API view. This is one of their wrappers that allows you to create an API view that accepts certain request methods. So being either a get request or a post request and all the other types of methods. And then we're also going to import the response from REST framework dot response. So we import it like this. And this is basically what you will return. It's basically inheriting from the JSON response that we see here built in with Django. So what I'm going to do is just comment that out. And then what we can do is we'll run the server as well. But this time, instead of creating a function, we're going to create a class because the API view is something that we can inherit in our own classes. So we'll just say this is our test view and it's going to inherit from that API view, which gives us a lot of methods that we can work with. And one of them is the get method, which is just gonna take in self request args and keyword args. And this is very similar to just a normal Django class-based view. So this get method is what we'll use to handle when someone sends a get request to this endpoint. And we'll use the response to return a response at the end of this request. So we can actually go and get that exact same payload that we have here. And we'll just paste it there. Then we can say return a response of that data. We can take this test view into the URLs and actually just get rid of that one there. So we have to say test view dot as view because it's a class based view. And with that, we can then come back here and up. Oh, okay. We just need to add rest framework as an installed app. So let's just do that in the settings. So just add it over here and okay. And one more URL pattern in the URL configuration. We can also just change this into a path. We can get rid of that and just like that. And we'll import include. And let's just make sure here. We're not gonna copy the REST framework settings in just yet. So if we just come back here and refresh this, now you can see we're getting a little bit of an admin kind of interface with our data. So we can see it was an HTTP 200 response that we got back as the status code. And that means it's basically a successful request. 
this endpoint allows the get request and that's because we've specified the get method on this API view and the content type is application JSON. So that means that it's going to return a JSON payload as the actual content type of this response. And then we have the actual data that was returned, which is what we've been working with so far. And this is basically what the Django REST framework provides you with, a little admin interface to work with your API a little bit better. But what you can do is also come here and change this to JSON. And there you'll see that now it's just giving us that raw format. So here you can see it's in the query parameters of this URL. But if we just come back here, we can also get a lot more information about it. So this is just a little bit of an overview as to what the Django REST framework provides. We've only just touched the surface of these modules and everything that you can use from the REST framework package. And we'll definitely be exploring more of it as we get into the series. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.